By a twist of fate, I met my wife, Linda. Also, by a quirk of fate, I found out that she was cheating on me. Although the events were separated by years, the two events occurred in the same place. This place was located at my workplace in Honolulu, Hawaii. The business I started came about by accident. I went to the University of Hawaii with every intention of getting an MBA and then getting a job at a Fortune 500 company. Even with public tuition, I still had to work to get through school. In high school, I became interested in computers. So to make extra money in college, I used my acquired skills in computer repair. Eventually, I started building my own and selling them at a lower price than Best Buy. I received my bachelor's degree but decided not to go to graduate school. I started my own business, so why would I work for someone else? In college, I realized that I was bad at interacting with people. This lesson was as valuable as my degree. I met Linda's brother Don before I even met her. He had problems with his computer, or rather with his father. He brought his father's old Intellivision game console. It was a little-known piece of gaming equipment that dates back to the 1980s. Don's father was nostalgic for it, and Don wanted it restored for his father's birthday. This thing hasn't worked in over ten years, but Don found it in the attic. Don Eldridge was built like a brick. His chest was close to a rectangle. He played football as a defensive back in high school and college. Back then, he let his curly brown hair grow long and wild, and he had a beard to match. Add to this a very large nose that could be called a trunk, coupled with the fact that his name was Don, and inevitably someone called him Mastodon. The name stuck. Every time he made a feint, the fans made elephant noises. Although he looked impressive in appearance, his demeanor could not have been more friendly. Don was always the guy who would reach out to pick up a player he had just dropped. He had a sense of fair play, as well as some fearsome skills on the football field. If he hadn't injured his knee during his senior year at the University of Hawaii, he might have made it to the NFL. Mastodon belonged to the Hawaiian royal family. Even though I'm not athletic in the slightest, I've always followed the Rainbow Warriors. Yes, this is a real team name, adopted by our common alma mater long before rainbows became fashionable. Although I decided that continuing to college was not for me, I had some loyalty to the place where I spent four years studying something I didn't want to do next. I was a little amazed. Mastodon, I can't believe Hawaii's most eligible bachelor came to see me. By the way, my name is Ryan, Ryan Novak. He gave me a friendly slap on the back, nearly dislocating my shoulder. Well, Ryan, I won't be single for long. For some reason, the woman accepted my offer to marry my ugly ass. My sister is the most attractive in the family. That didn't set the bar too high. I told him my price, which was discounted because of my gratitude to this man. I asked for his autographed photo. My marketing studies were not in vain. Two weeks later, I actually met Linda when she came to pick up Don's restored computer because he was doing local advertising or taking tourists on his boat for Mastodon tours. I was blown away. She had the same curls in her long brown hair as her brother. Her nose was not as prominent and she was several inches shorter. Essentially, she had many of the same features in a much more attractive and petite package that also included breasts and dimples. She wasn't stunning, but she was definitely attractive and had a distinct sexuality. We started dating and that's how I met her best friend, Don's wife, Candace. Candace and Linda have grown up together since elementary school. Candace has been in love with Don since she hit puberty. Eventually, Candace turned into a woman and Don noticed his sister's friend and began courting her, or something like that. This is the saccharine version, I'm told. Candace has turned into a beauty. She's one of those Hawaiian women you see in travel ads, a mixture of Asian and Native Islander with God knows what other bit of cuteness mixed in. There was no doubt in my mind that she was targeting him and he was powerless to resist. All three of them shared memories that I was not a part of, but in the end I got settled. The only thing that was noticeable was that Candace was never called by the obvious nickname, Candy. She stopped anyone from using the nickname, and one night when I asked her why, she replied, Candy sounds like a stripper who's empty-headed. I never wanted anyone to think of me like that. Don and Candace got married, and soon Linda and I did too. Linda and I had two children. Don was shooting blanks 
and he and Candace both wanted kids, so they adopted two. They adopted each child around the same time Linda gave birth to ours. Adoption does take time, and it was like we were all in sync with each other. It was great to be part of a strong quartet. We loved being around each other. All the kids played together, and we were in each other's lives almost daily. Naturally, something so perfect cannot last long. The gods hate eternal happiness in our lives. I grew my business so much that Linda didn't have to work. Not only did I repair and build computers, but I also restored old arcade games and home gaming systems. The change came when our children were old enough to go to school. Linda wanted to work part-time. I didn't have any problems with it. Why not? I didn't want my beloved to be bored. She took a job with a credit card company in their call center. It was four hours a day, and she could always send the kids to school and be back before they got home. I was happy. She was happy. We all should have been on the poster of model families. It was Candace who accidentally revealed to me the fact that Linda was cheating on me. It was a typical work day for me when Candace called me and said, Ryan, I really need you to work on my computer. This is an emergency. I need this right now. The emergency was that her laptop was a piece of metal that wouldn't even start. Candace was an aspiring writer, and her stories were only on this laptop. I assured her that I would do my best after lecturing her about the need to back up her work to a flash drive and then dug deeper. It wasn't that difficult to recover the data. Candace uploaded something she shouldn't have. Curiosity took over, and I began to look for the culprit. It turned out that it was a photo that Linda had sent by email. This letter contained a photograph of a very handsome, shirtless man. I later learned that his name was Hunter Sampson. Linda's text accompanying the photo read, This is my boss. The photo plus the exclamation point made me look into Candace and Linda's email. Without going into detail, Linda's boss sent her this photo and she shared it with her best friend. I will say this for my sister-in-law, she questioned Linda about what happened. What did she say that her boss thought it was okay to send her a photo of him showing off his amazing abs? She was merciless in this email exchange when Linda tried to put it aside, saying it was just a photo of him surfing. This angered Candace, and she said in no uncertain terms that Linda was very close to crossing the line. Linda backed down and agreed. She said she wouldn't encourage anything like that again. Everything looked good. Still, I was suspicious. Did it really end after Candace told her off? I wasn't sure, so I looked at Linda's laptop. Knowing that she knew what I did for a living, I knew she would be smart enough to delete any damn emails and also smart enough to empty the trash can if she sent something she shouldn't. Be noticed. What she didn't delete were her sent messages. This confuses so many people. This folder was a revelation. Many of her messages were in response to a previous message, so I quickly got a pretty good picture. Linda sent him a photo of her breasts. She didn't send a single photo of her private parts, even though Hunter asked. She told him she would send one when he sent a photo of his manhood. He simply told her that she had to see him in person because no photograph could do it justice. After that, subsequent letters became even worse. Yes, after that, they had sex. They both raved about how good it was every time they met and couldn't wait for the next time they met. I did what any normal person would do, went through my wife's personal email, and discovered what I discovered. That evening I decided to meet her face to face. This had to be handled delicately as it was Wednesday, day, and the kids had school the next day. I didn't want the neighbors to call the police. Children tend to remember such moments. So when I got home that evening, I answered her when she said, Hey, honey, how was your day? Let's talk about this later. It seemed to her that I was alarmed about something. I must have had a terrible face. She didn't put any pressure on me. We had dinner and put the kids to bed. We walked over to the couch, and she looked at me and said, Whatever is on your mind, I hope you know you can talk to me about it. I'm so glad I can. It can be difficult for a man to openly express his feelings. You really made me feel comfortable so I can express everything right now. I put my hand on top of hers. Linda seemed touched. Of course you can, dear. I am your protection. She squeezed my hand and I squeezed it back, looking her straight in the eyes and saying, It really bothers me that you're sleeping with your boss. 
so I'd really like to talk about how we handle divorce without it hurting the kids. She pulled her hand away from mine as if it were radioactive. Then her face turned white and she made a sound like a dying animal, jumped out the door, got into the car, and drove away. Things didn't go quite as I expected. I had prepared a whole speech and her departure prevented it. This was an offense worse than deception. I mean, I actually rehearsed so many choice comments in my head. It only got worse. Now I had to prepare the children for morning school, and this was not my thing at all. I had no chance to vent or get an explanation, and suddenly I was a single father with two children. For the next two days, Linda remained silent. I had no idea where she was or what she was thinking. She just disappeared. Explaining to the children where she went was a delaying tactic. Until I heard from her, I had no idea what to say without traumatizing them. So I told them what I thought they could understand without worrying. Mom visits Aunt Candace and Uncle Don. As it turned out, this was true. Linda lived with her best friend and brother. I learned about this over the phone from Don, who invited me to his home to talk to Linda without the children. I love Don and Candace. This was clearly an intervention. Curiosity made me agree, as well as the desire to finally give my speech. The intervention took place at Don and Candace's home. Don and Candace sat on the couch, a friendly couple. Linda and I sat in comfortable chairs facing the sofa. Looking back, I realize it was a good arrangement. It was as if Don and Candace weren't taking sides, rather we were both on trial. Don started the conversation by saying, Ryan, I love you. You were a wonderful husband to my sister, and I will always adore you for that. However, I know that my sister hurt you. It hurts me too, brother. I want you to know that. I feel bad for both of you. My nails grabbed the arms of the expensive chair I was sitting in as I said, I'm glad you feel my pain. I'm glad you can empathize. I really want Hunter to share my pain too. I mean, he really played a role in this. I wish he could feel pain all over his body because that's how I feel right now. I hope you're not thinking about physical violence, Candace intervened. A little bit. I want to hit him with a cricket bat. Why not a baseball bat? Candace asked with a slight smile. Because I don't want to go to jail for assault and I think a cricket bat would probably cause less injury. I also love the sight of that flat bat smacking his ass. I want his body to hurt so much that it hurts to put on or take off his clothes. This is impractical for two reasons. Why? We live on an island where no one plays cricket. So where do you find a cricket bat? Don was right. The second reason. Violence never solves anything. I disagree. This stopped fascism in Europe. You can't compare Hunter to a Nazi. Well, you're right here. There is no comparison. A Nazi never had sex with my wife. I know that the worst thing for you is lies and deception. This breach of trust will be difficult to correct. I was silent for several seconds. Everyone was looking at me, waiting to see how I would react to her overture. Actually, this is not the worst thing. The worst part is that you had sex with someone other than me. Linda tried to save what she saw as a chance for me to accept her sincere and remorseful confession. I only had sex with him seven times. I nodded. What a relief. Thank God only seven times, and not some unforgivable number. Since you all seem to be experts on this subject, what exactly would that number be? I looked at everyone in the room. Nobody answered this question. I didn't expect anyone to answer since the question was rhetorical. Don tried to avoid answering. Once, twice, a hundred times. This is not the most important thing. What matters is that Linda wants to restore your marriage and is incredibly remorseful. Candace supported him before a second had even passed. Can you be sure that the problem you are facing is not your ego? I didn't even have to think about how to answer. I can answer this unequivocally, Candace. Of course it's my ego. I just can't believe you all here are trying to minimize this. Don said, Listen to me, brother. Your ego is something you can control. Nobody is trying to minimize it. You can strengthen yourself by defeating your ego. Why let this stand in the way of true love? Look at it this way. Forgiveness is a gift you give not only to another person, but also to yourself. 
I felt like I was in the Twilight Zone or Los Angeles. So, if I had an affair with a woman seven times in three months, would you forgive me? Oh yes, yes and yes again. I wouldn't like it. This is the worst thing I can imagine, but I would take you back. I'll prove it to you. Have an affair, get even with me. I deserve it. I want you to have an affair. Please do this if it will help us get back together. This can happen to anyone. I admit that she said the right words. I asked a question. Linda, why did you do this? This has nothing to do with you, Ryan. When Candace and I were dating, she always had an attractive friend, and I always had a less attractive one. I've never gotten a handsome one. This was the only time the handsome man became interested in me. This didn't improve my mood. I know I'm not handsome. What surprised me was that Candace was angrier than I was. Are you really blaming me for everything, bitch? I was afraid that Candace would scratch her face, but Don held his wife back. Linda stood up from her chair and said, I was just jealous. Oh, please don't think I blame you. You are my sister. It was my insecurity. I don't want to lose our friendship. Candace stopped struggling from Don's embrace and said, We have always been and always will be sisters. I'm really sorry you didn't get any handsome ones. You deserve it. Although none of the handsome men can compare with my Don, I wish you had learned sooner that looks aren't everything. I felt like the conversation had somehow escaped me, and at that moment I was most worried about myself. I tried to return everything to normal. Candace, I know you love your best friend and you say I'm a good friend too. If I cheated on Linda, would you be as forgiving? Would you persuade her to make peace with me? Candace somehow moved away from the emotional moment and said, Look, she was able to share her life. What she did has nothing to do with you. She lived two different lives. I said, That sounds like complete nonsense. I know this is hard for men to understand, Candace said, but all women are capable of this to one degree or another. This was also unexpected. I turned. Don, if Candace cheated on you for three months, would you forgive her? Don looked at me, offended. This is a ridiculous question. Candace is not some dirty slut who would betray her husband, change, and would risk my marriage. Linda began to cry and howl. Don hit an obstacle and backed out. What I meant was that we can all give in to temptation, even Candace. She will always overcome temptation, but if she doesn't, I will forgive her. Even if she gives in to temptation seven times? Once, twice, a hundred times. Not in this case. It is important to deal with your male ego. So, my love for Candace is stronger. This seemed like complete crap to me. So I asked his wife, Candace, if you cheated on Don, who I know you love, would you expect him to forgive you? I can't believe you're even asking me. I'm not some fallen woman. Linda screamed and collapsed into the fetal position. Candace ran up and hugged her. No, not you, Linda. You are not a fallen woman just because you had sex with another man other than your husband. Linda howled even louder. Sex with someone else does not make you a fallen woman. You do not fallen woman. You didn't do this for the money. You did this because you have problems with a low self-esteem. Linda began to shake and hit herself in the face. I saw Don wondering whether to call an ambulance. Don and Candace held Linda's hands. I tried to call Reason into the room again after Linda stopped herself from attacking herself. I looked at Candace. So let's see if I got this right. Linda wants me to have an affair. Don says he'll forgive you for having an affair. You're saying it's normal for someone to want sex with an attractive person. Did I understand correctly? Yes, Don answered. We all tell you this. Candace, you also told me that I should love Linda as much as you do because I was the one who married her. Yes, Ryan, you married her, for better or for worse. Don and I are more concerned about her well-being than you are. She's clearly hot. Well, I said, you've all given me a lot to think about. I thought now was the right time to apologize and get it over with. I liked Don, I liked Candace, and I fucking loved Linda. Cutting them all out of my life would be painful. However, this evening turned into a circus, and not in a good way. I left that evening feeling like I had ruined their close relationship, but neither of them really cared about me. I returned home and stared at the ceiling for hours, thinking. Around 3 a.m., I had an epiphany. 
I actually slept for two hours after replaying it in my head several times. I woke up to the doorbell ringing after I had my first cup of coffee. Yes, I wake up after the first cup of coffee. I don't remember how I somehow sent the children to school. I wasn't sure I fed them. It was Candace. I invited her in, but I was wary. The previous night had been a shit show. I took a second cup of coffee and poured it for her. Sorry about the shit show yesterday, Candace said. I nearly spat out my coffee when she repeated my thoughts. After a few seconds, I said, I decided that you were right. You show more concern for her well-being than I do. So I have a solution. I'm glad you came to your senses. I paused for dramatic effect. You and I will have an affair. Seven meetings. After this, Linda will be completely forgiven. What? Seriously, what? Linda said I could have an affair if it would help. So I take her word for it. Don said he'll forgive you if you cheat on him, so I'll take his word for it. You said you want me to forgive Linda, so I'll take your word for it. I should talk to Don about this before I even think about it. This will ruin the situation. Linda hid it from me, lied and kept me in the dark. Everything should be the same. Don has already said that he will forgive you, so there is no need to consult him. Linda never told me I was the one who caught her. Tell him when it's over, if necessary. Damn it, I want you to tell him after this is all over, but not before. Still, it won't be as mean as Linda acted. I'll definitely tell Linda, too. How the hell am I supposed to meet Don every day and keep it a secret? You have to share your life. I heard from you that all women can do this better than men. I don't think I can do this. There's too much to think about. Why don't you just find someone else? Well, I'm pretty sure I won't find the right beauty that really attracts me. I'll probably have to hire an escort. I do not like it. You have a personal interest and an amazing body, so you are my option. She replied, I have to think. Of course, that meant no. I wasn't surprised that Candace didn't really mean what she said that night. She just didn't try all this nonsense on herself. I was making plans for a divorce. Unexpectedly, two days later, Candace changed her mind. I decided to accept your demand. I wish I could say it was because she was crazy about me. But alas, the real reason was mundane and perhaps predictable. She showed up at my house in a frenzy without even knocking, just opening the door and bursting inside. I can't stand it anymore. She's driving Don and me crazy. She's ruining my marriage. I could have said something sarcastic at that moment, but when things are going well, it's better to mind your own business. Which was a shame because I actually had something to say. Candace agreed to all my conditions. Her only demand was that I would actually forgive Linda completely if Candace followed through. Honestly, I didn't expect her to ever agree with everything I said, so I only hesitated for a moment. After a short pause came, Absolutely. I'm only doing this because she's my best friend. You, I don't like you too much right now. However, she agreed, and that was really important. We started working out the details. It will look suspicious if you immediately forgive Linda. How do we sell this to Linda and Don that you're taking Linda back? I had an answer to this question. All I needed was to offer Linda a lifeline. I called Linda during my lunch break that day. Linda, I need you to report your relationship with Hunter to HR. What should I tell you? I can't say it was sexual harassment. I won't lie. I'm not asking you to do this, my dear. I'm not asking you to do anything unethical that will affect your conscience. However, after reading your employee handbook, I discovered that there is no communication policy between a supervisor and a subordinate. You know, one of the measures aimed at preventing the possibility of sexual harassment. You really work in a good company. So just report the relationship. She did it. It turned out that Hunter was married to a very rich woman with a prenuptial agreement. It's a gift when the enemy puts his own head in the noose, and all you have to do is knock the chair out from under your feet. Let's just say Hunter got into trouble and left Hawaii, never to be seen again. After Linda did this, I welcomed her home. I greeted her with kisses and we made passionate love the night she returned home. Linda and I were together again, although it was conditional. I haven't thrown away my reservations. Linda felt it. We made love and acted like a family. 
but she knew that I had not completely forgiven her. She knew there was still a wall. She was right. This wall won't come down until Candace makes up her mind. Candace didn't back down when I agreed on our first date. I decided it would be spectacular. I booked a room at the Four Seasons with a king bed. I placed rose petals on the slightly discarded bed. I lit the candles and made sure they wouldn't set off the smoke alarm because I turned it off. She will see a bottle of champagne and a vase of strawberries when she enters. This will be an illicit affair. I will play the role of lover until the end. I wanted her to be in on it, so it was only right that I was in on it too. It turned out to be easy for me. I was looking forward to it, and although part of me felt like Candace might give up at any moment, I wasn't going to be the one to kill her momentum. I was going to do my part and trust that she would do hers. If not, we'll just go back to where we started. Candace ruined my plans. She appeared wearing a long coat that was very inappropriate for the climate and carrying what might as well have been an overnight bag. Ryan, what kind of champagne with strawberries? This won't work. From what? I already have the most romantic, wonderful, best lover at home. So I don't want you to even dream of becoming a better lover. Sweep those fucking rose petals off the bed. I also don't eat strawberries and just give me a few minutes in the bathroom. Does this mean you are retreating? No. It just means that we will have sex, not make love. I'd rather not see a single pink petal on the bed when I come out of the bathroom. Walking in with her bag, she slammed the door. Old Faithful stood at attention even before she entered the room. While I was waiting for her to come out, the poor thing was fading by the minute, and I thought, what the hell is she doing there? The woman who came out of the bathroom was packed in a black bra that was a size too small and black panties that looked like they had been painted on. Her newly applied lipstick was a shade of red that I think is called Fuck Me. So if this works, I'm Candy. You don't make love to me. You don't call me Candace. I'm Candy. I'm not your lover. I'm your fallen woman. Every time we meet, I'm sweetie, and I'm here to have you. That's all my plans. I was completely attentive. Call me Candace once and it'll be over. From now until we're done with the hot and sweaty, I'm Candy. Are there any problems with this? For what? I grabbed her and our tongues danced in the blink of an eye. This was not at all what I had imagined or planned. This was much better. Candace, or was it Candy, led me to the bed, pushed me back onto it, and simply pulled my pants down and worked on my manhood. These were the most juicy moments of my life. I thought I would die after this. Our pillow talk after that was a little unconventional. I was in a fog, and she spoke while I listened. At that moment, I was very receptive to everything she had to say. That's how it works. You don't have sex with Candace. You have candy. If you mess up just once, I won't be able to live with it. Don't say shit. Just agree, and candy will drive you crazy. Agree? Looking back, I think it may have been a CIA technique, although it may have just been endorphins. I agreed. Fine. Now Candy wants to get fucked, so do it, and you better not disappoint me. We fucked each other, and it was phenomenal. The following meetings were a variation of the first. We had sex, she turned me on again, and then we had sex again. She liked to say obscenities. Fuck me. Fuck me hard, you son of a bitch. When she said that, I couldn't tell whether she hated me or, on the contrary, she liked it. I assumed it was a little bit of both because it intensified with each subsequent meeting. Organizing these meetings became increasingly difficult. Sneaking turned out to be much more difficult than I had imagined. Much of this difficulty stemmed from Linda calling me every chance she got to let me know where she was and that she wasn't cheating on me. This made it much more difficult for me to cheat on her. I also imagined that Candace had a hard time hiding it from Don, but we never talked about it. When we got together, it was just a fucking marathon. While my affair with Candy continued, I was surprised to lose almost all hostility toward Linda. Each infrequent rendezvous of hot sex with Linda's best friend made me appreciate lovemaking with my wife even more. After each illicit sex I had with Candy, I felt more and more comfortable with Linda. We were returning to where we were before, 
I appreciated the insatiable sex with Candy, but it also made me appreciate the tender connection with Linda. I wondered if she felt the same way, juggling her sex with Hunter and still loving me. The only awkward moments at first were when the four of us were together. Don or Linda would make completely innocent remarks, but at the same time make my brain say, don't look at Candace, don't look at Candace, don't fucking look at Candace. For example, Don once said, I admire you, Ryan. I know it was hard for you. You have chosen a difficult path. You could have hired an attractive prostitute as revenge, but you didn't. You invited Linda to make amends, and she did. Well done, brother. While I was thinking, why does Don think I don't deserve anything more than a prostitute? Reason intervened, and then, don't you dare meet Candace's eyes. So I said, thank you, brother. Candace seemed completely calm. I have to admit, there was something about women being better at compartmentalizing their lives. It was not easy for me in conversations with sexual overtones. While our kids were playing and the adults were drinking wine, Linda looked at Don and Candace and said, You helped Ryan and I get back together. Then she kissed me. After we broke the kiss, all I thought was, Don't look at Candace. Don't look at Candace. This was relatively easy since Candace also avoided making eye contact with me in these situations. Candace and Candy seemed like completely different people. Candy sent me messages as we got closer to the meeting. And yes, it was Candy, not Candace. I became concerned that I might be contributing to the creation of multiple personality disorder, but I pushed the thought aside because I needed to save my marriage. Nothing worthwhile comes without costs. Candy sent me photos of herself in seductive outfits. Yes, I had already seen her naked, but these photos turned me on. I had, sweetie, to prove my point to her, Don, and Linda. I also had her because she was hot. I had no idea if my relationship with them would ultimately survive, but I hoped it would. I'm an idealistic ass. Candy was more than true to her word. She was a monster. I had her in positions that avoided the intimacy of hearts and were only sex. Besides, dirty sex. The exception was last night. We had more time than usual since we didn't have to worry about getting caught. After that night, Candace made it clear that she was going to tell Don everything. We left with one last hooray. I made it to three finishes, and I have no idea how many she had. We were both so loud and vocal that I'm surprised the other couples at this cheap motel didn't report us to management because we were disturbing them. We definitely came out with a bang and more than a few whimpers. After our last wild sex session, I showered first and managed to mostly regain my balance. Candy went, and when the bathroom door opened again, Candy was gone forever. Candace emerged from the bathroom in her usual modest outfit. Her behavior spoke for itself. We're done. It was good. Indulging in sweet treats from time to time is fun, but a constant diet of sweets will kill you. Candace left before me. There was no goodbye kiss, just a discussion of what we would do next. She was going to tell Don everything in the evening, and after that we would tell Linda everything. After all, it was a family affair. Candace will tell Don and then we can all meet at my house. I told Linda that Don and Candace would come over after the kids were in bed. It was time to put everything on the table. Something happened to Don, so he was going to arrive late, so it was just me, Candace, and Linda. I went first. Linda, I am completely ready to forgive you. In fact, I have already forgiven. But before you accept that, I think Candace should speak up first. Linda was excited to hear my words, then looked questioningly at Candace. I had sex with Ryan. Linda immediately hugged Candace. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh God, you really are my sister. Candace hugged her back and said, It was the only way. I love you. It was you, Linda said passionately. Now I don't have to worry about whether Ryan got sick or someone got pregnant. Thank you. Things didn't go as I expected. I thought shuffling was complete crap. I didn't believe anyone was sincere in what they were saying. It turns out I was wrong, 
at least with regard to women. When I'm wrong, I admit it, no matter how painful it is. I joined them in a group hug. I looked at Linda and said, Everything is truly forgiven. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. She jumped on me and kissed me. Thank you, my love. You will never regret this. Well, I think we've all learned some valuable lessons here. In the end, I had to calm her down. I looked at Candace and said, You showed me a lot and I want to apologize to you. I embarrassed you and you showed me the true meaning of love. I was wrong to ask you this. You made me a better person by showing me what true love is. Candace hugged me tightly and pecked me on the lips. Not at all like lately. I did this for both of you. You two belong together. The doorbell rang. I assumed it was dawn. Now open. As I approached the door, I realized that I had a lot to say. I learned a lot about myself and the people who were close to me. Tears came to my eyes when I realized that the people around me were much more selfless than I was. I tried to show how hypocritical those around me are, and I discovered that this is not the case. In fact, it was all about my male ego. I had to apologize to everyone, but especially to Don. Don, the women there are crying with all their might. To tell the truth, I feel like crying myself. I've learned quite a few things about myself, and not all of them are good. I also learned something about myself. I think we're all probably on to something with this whole male ego thing. I dismissed the idea too lightly. Don had a hoarse tone and a strange expression on his face. It took me a while to understand this, as it was a feeling I had never seen in Don. And then it hit me. Barely contained rage. Ah, that's it. At that moment I had two questions. Firstly, where did he find the cricket bat so quickly? Second, would I have a half-second head start to get to the back door before an angry mastodon with a bad knee caught up with me? I decided that the answer to the first question could wait, and I rushed through the house to the back door. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.